the mechanism of neo-Darwinism that would be the mechanism of random mutation and natural selection. So the combination of chance and, and necessity. It has been, in my view, disproven uh, with several lines of evidence. One would be uh, the evidence from origin of proteins and research done by uh, Douglas X and his colleagues. And what he has shown is proteins are the stuff that makes everything alive. Everything in organisms is made of proteins, and DNA just codes for proteins. And proteins are made from amino acids, about 20 different. So you can think about it's like an alphabet of 10, uh, 20 different letters, and then you have different possibilities to combine these letters into words that give meaningful sentences. Meaningful sentences would be proteins that do some stuff that is biologically relevant. And uh, for this to happen, these amino acids have to be combined in a way that they fold into a three-dimensional structure. Only if they do that, you get a protein that do, uh, can do something uh, of biological function. And what uh, Douglas X has shown is that in this vast space of possible combination of 20 different amino acids, and the most proteins have a length of 200 to maybe 1,000 or 2,000 amino acids, it's an enormous combinatorial space. And the islands of function where you get this folding structure which can, can do some works, they are so isolated that you cannot move from one island of function to another island of function just by little steps, little changes that all have a survival value. You would have to make one major transition, one jump, and that, is, that needs a miracle. That's not possible with the Darwinian process. In the Darwinian process, you need small changes, and each change has to be a viable organism that has some advantage and is uh, filtered uh, by, by natural selection. So that is one line of evidence. Protein evolution basically is impossible and, and it's not possible with a random search process to find these islands of function. A second line of evidence would be if you look at DNA, it's basically an informational rich structure. It codes for the proteins of an organism, the makeup of an organism. And if you ask information scientists, let's say, for example, computer scientists, if you take a computer code and you introduce random errors, all those information scientists will laugh at you if you say you could improve a program, let's say Windows XP, and by introducing random bits, deteriorating the code and thereby getting to Windows 10 or even Mac OS or something. It's impossible, it's, it's ridiculous. This idea that random changes could be the cause for the appearance of novelty in, in biology doesn't make sense from the viewpoint of information theory. And finally, from my own field of, of expertise from the uh, uh, fossil record, the fossil record contradicts the predictions of, of Darwinian theory. Darwinian theory predicts gradual transitions. We find non-gradual transitions. It predicts uh, small building up of, of uh, structures by small changes. What we find is sudden appearance of changes. It predicts that we will find agreement between molecular datings of groups, how old they are by molecular clock data, and fossil data. What we actually find is that the fossil data consistently are much, much younger than the data we get from the assumed molecular clocks. So there are a lot of data that show that this Darwinian uh, story cannot be true and doesn't agree with the evidence. And so some people may say, well, that's just propaganda by, by Darwin doubters or even creationists. And there is no debate about uh, Darwinism in mainstream science and uh, evolution is a fact and so on. And this is basically a blatant lie. It's not true. 